Hello and welcome to this uh, next video that I'm doing today and this one is going to be about bearded dragons. Uh, I'm just going to apologise first of all, uh, I don't have any bearded dragons to actually show you in the video today so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to be popping in some uh, pictures of bearded dragons so you have a look at them, see what they look like and as we go along in the video. Uh, so as I say, this is going to be a bit of a background about them. Uh, so bearded dragons, uh, their genus name or Latin name is Pogana. Uh, Pogana basically is, it contains six lizard species are referred to as bearded dragons. So there's different, how can we say it, different uh, morphs or different kinds of bearded dragons that you can get within the genus. Uh, the name bearded is derived from... Uh, the fact that they, their underside of their, their throat, uh, they can puff out, actually. They can puff out and it turns black uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, reasons being it can be for mating, uh, for stress, or, or to ward off any other uh, bearded dragons or ward off anyone uh, that they feel threatened by. Uh, so yeah, more really to do with mating and uh, threatening behavior that's more when they actually puff it out it puffs right out and it goes jet black a bit like my beard well, apart from the gray hairs anyway uh so yeah also they're they're semi-arboreal in some cases uh don't when i say arboreal they're not you know gonna be you're not gonna be finding them high up in trees and nothing like that it's just gonna be like lower down sort of branches that they'll find uh, some rockery They'll climb up that, some bushes maybe, they'll climb up that. Uh, so that's what they'll do. And also, uh, where you would find them is, uh, those kind of sort of habitats to be near human habitation. Uh, so that's where you'll find them. Bearded dragons are native to Australia. That is where they come from. Uh, they tend to uh, bask on rocks. So I mentioned rockery, they'll bask on rocks. So they'll sit there, get the heat from the underside of their belly, their timber like mine. Uh, and they'll get the heat that way. And they'll open their mouth as well, just to take in that heat and bask. Uh, they're found in habitats such as deserts, uh, shrublands, uh, and eucalyptus woodlands as well. That's where you'll find them. Uh, but mainly, I would say, in the more desert area, because they do require high temperatures. Uh, that's, what, that's, that's what they require like, for helping digestion and everything else about their, their biology. Uh, what they look like is uh, they have a sort of like tri triangular head shape uh, when you look down upon them, it's kind of triangular. And they can also flatten their bodies, <laughs> which is quite unique. Uh, they can flatten their bodies quite close, like a pancake, uh, to the ground when they feel also a bit threatened. Uh, they do that, actually flatten their bodies and they puff at their beards and they, you know, look at me, I'm big. You know, that's what they do. Uh, along their bodies, uh, they have spiny scales uh, arranged in rows and clusters. Uh, so that's what... Uh, they kind of look like they they can come in different uh, colors now uh, there's different uh, morphs uh, to them which I'll explain about uh, in a few seconds here. so the most popular species of bearded dragon uh, for in terms of captivity is the central bearded dragon uh, they're the ones that are norm that you normally find so if you go to a reptile shop uh, you would Normally, these bearded dragons will probably be central bearded dragons as they are actually uh, bred more for the morphs. So, you see translucent bearded dragons, hypo bearded dragons. So, you see slightly different patterns. Normally, a bearded dragon is kind of greyish with like a sort of black in their back, you know, in their, their back of their body, and that. But they can also be kind of bright white, tinge of yellow in there. So, that's all to do with the DNA there again. Uh, they also have a, a very unique and very cute hand waving gesture. So it's kind of like they'll sit on a rock or something and they'll just like that. 
and just kind of wave their hand. What it is actually, it's, it's to show uh, submission, uh, more uh, often to acknowledge uh, another bearded dragon's uh, territory. Uh, that's what that's for. Uh, so if there's another, say we've got two males, uh, that then one male will signal, hopefully, I am submitting to your territory uh, to try and avoid a fight. Uh, also, there's head bobbing uh, to show dominance. So they kind of bob the head up and down to show dominance. It's also to uh, part of the mating side of things as well. Uh, the male will bob their head, will actually uh, circle around the female, uh, stand in front of the female, and kind of do a dance in front of her, stomp, and then go around and then actually bite the female in the back of the neck and hold on and mate. Sounds a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, males grow uh, to 60 centimetres, uh, about 24 inches. And uh, females grow to around about 50, 51 centimetres, uh, which is about 20 inches. Uh, so that's sort of the maximum. Just depends upon the individual bit of dragon that it's make up, but that's the maximum lengths. Uh, also occasionally throughout the year, uh, they enter what is called brumation, uh, which is a form of hibernation. Uh, so for they can go months literally without eating. Uh, They'll occasionally uh, go to drink some water, but they don't know how to do that. Uh, they go through this action, uh, as I say, throughout the year. Mainly when, I would say, actually, it's when, it's at, when they're out in the wild, particularly, when the temperatures go below, uh, say, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit uh, during the night and uh, about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, during the day, uh, that's when they kind of they slow down and you know so the temperatures the temperatures are dropped, you know, and that is the case uh, in captivity. I think when the temperatures have dropped, uh, they can sense that and they enter some brumation. Uh, so sometimes keepers panic and they worry. My my beard is not eating. Uh, it's food is not eating. It's, you know. It's occasion, you know, not even drinking. You don't see it drink, like you know. So you, you kind of worry, like you know, But I think the, the key thing is is to make sure uh, you, you check on your bit of dragon. You make sure that, that it, everything looks okay, that there's no uh, external uh, problems like parasites and like that, like old mites. Uh, weighing is also a great thing to do. Get into the habit of uh, when you have reptiles, uh, just occasionally weigh just to make sure. That any uh, weight loss is not detrimental, you're not totally dropping down. Uh, I think I've actually mentioned this before in previous videos, but it's certainly something to get in the habit of, you know, when this occurs, which is just to weigh your your pets when uh, brumation or any form of hibernation ha happens. Uh, the diet of bearded dragon uh, is pretty similar to the Chinese water dragons in terms of like that they eat crickets. Uh, locusts, Dubai roaches, uh, silkworms, waxworms, moria worms, mealworms. Uh, so, they, yeah, I mean, the staple diet again would be having your, your crickets and your locusts, but also vegetation because they're omnivorous. So, things like kale, uh, spinach, uh, roque, you know, if you offer that to them, they'll eat that as well. They can take uh, fruit and veg. Uh, when I, I did have a bearded dragon going back uh, a few years and uh, bless him, his name was uh, Phantom. Uh, that's what I called him. Uh, just due to uh, his, his, his coloration on his back, it just reminded me of a Phantom for some reason. Uh, a very unique personality he had as well. Uh, but he enjoyed eating butternut squash and sweet potato. I would normally chop this up very fine because uh, it can be kind of blocky and hard, like that. so I chopped it very fine and put it in a bowl for him, and he would help himself, and that's what uh, that's what he ate there. They can also eat apple, uh, 
apples as well, uh, some strawberry. You know, but these are more apple and strawberry, more of a treat. So just be aware of that. I wouldn't offer that all the time. Same as the wax worms, don't offer them all the time. That's your treat. You know, so think of it like Weight Watchers. You know, you, you've done well throughout the week, you get your one little treat. You know, that's essentially the same thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much Bearded Dragons. There are a bit more details that you can go into, particularly on the maintenance side of things. Uh, and also like the morphs as well. But this is just a basic information about Bearded Dragons. Uh, as I say, so in this video, uh, I've, I've put up some, some pictures as well of Bearded Dragons uh, out in the wild. Uh, so you have a look at them. Uh, always, I mean, uh, I always believe in getting a bit of dragons from when they're hatchlings, you know, literally, you know, so that you can get that experience of seeing them grow uh, and also taming them as well and get them used to you. They don't mind being handled. Uh, again, you just have to be careful. There's a, there's, a, there's a correct way of handling them. And I think I've mentioned this before with, with uh, the Chinese water dragons, if you go underneath, do not go from above, go underneath. Another great way is just to put your arm and hand in their enclosure, their vivarium, uh, and just leave it there and let them smell you. Let them smell your hand and see it as, as not as a threat. That is a very good way. Just, just leave it there for a few minutes. So, and sometimes they'll just walk onto your hand and then you just gently lift them up. So they're fantastic pets to have. Uh, once you uh, got all the setup correct, and again, the setup uh, is pretty much similar uh, in a way to Chinese water dragons. You need a UVB tube for uh, UV lighting uh, and to help with D3 uh, vitamins for the bone structure. You also need a basking lamp as well. You, you need high temperatures because, they, as I say, they come from a desert area. Humidity wise. They don't need a lot of humidity, they, you know, uh, they're not like Chinese water dragons in that way. You don't need to spray them enough not like that. You don't need to spray your bit of dragons, but they need a high temperature. So you need a strong strength basking and possibly a ceramic, you know, or some people put a heat mat uh, either on the side or underneath. Uh, it just depends upon set up which way you want to go i'm going to put care sheet links uh, as i always do at the end of the videos uh everyone's setup is, is kind of different you know but the basics are that you need the uh, uv and also you need a basking and you need the controllers for them so for a basket you need a dimming stat for your uv you need a, a starter an arcade possibly arcadia they're the usual ones uh to start up the UV tube and for ceramic bulbs you need a, a pulse proportional stat so uh, doesn't help your electricity bill but that's what you need yeah so it's always something to think about when you, if you enter into the area of wanting to keep uh, a lizard or rep, you know reptile of any form you know you need to have the proper equipment uh, substrate wise uh, actually just going to quickly delve into this as well uh, it's been a long area of contention uh, because they come from a desert area. So some people keep them on sand, perfectly fine, perfectly fine to keep them on sand. But the problem is, again, it's danger of impaction. Uh, so this happened, unfortunately, to Phantom. Uh, he had impaction uh, from sand. Uh, and unfortunately it caused him to, to die. Again, when they start showing signs of not being well, very difficult to pull him back, sadly. It really is very difficult. Uh, got him to the vets, but as I say, it was past the point uh, of saving him. Uh, it's, it is difficult to advise on the, on the substrate area, you know, but the, Sand is, is okay if you, if, you can, if you can monitor your bearded dragon. For starters, if you, when you have a hatchling, I would keep on newspaper or paper. That's what I would do. Uh, they're too small, so the risk of impaction really outweighs. So just keep on paper. 
as they grow, you can look at keeping on sand. Uh, putting cocoa husks down is that's not that's not going to help them. That's that's not the uh, the correct substrate for bearded dragons. Uh, and neither is cork bark. It has to be a deserty uh, sand. Uh, they kept, they've got calcium sand out there. Uh, as I say, you just have to keep an eye on things in terms of the feed inside. You know? uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much bearded dragons. Uh, for the video and uh, it's going to be a short video this one and I'm sorry I don't have any bit of dragons to show you I really um, I do apologize about that but that's going to be the theme uh, unfortunately because obviously I've only got so many uh, animals to show you you know but I want to give you as much information as I can in my videos about reptiles that's what the channel is primarily about and also interacting you telling me like if you have a reptile if you have a bit of dragon have a snake, interact, tell me how you're keeping them, what you're keeping them on. You know, I would love to hear all your uh, stories and all your uh, setups as well. Because I think with the reptile community, it is about sharing your experience with each other. You know, we are all advising, giving advice to everyone. You know? uh, and nobody, no one person is right or wrong. You know? Well, you can be very, very wrong, but very rarely in the reptile community you, you, you do your research and that and you you know some areas just need a bit more advice in you know but as i say it'd be great to hear from you so thank you very much for watching uh this video i hope you're all well and i look forward to seeing you in the next video